So just an opportunity to pause between the end of the year, 2019, and next year, this kind of space between where we can reflect on the past and look forward to what's ahead, um, and to really connect to that universal energy that we ha what happens when we just stop, listen, and feel. And then boom, real life. Hopefully not tomorrow because we should all just be hanging out and sleeping and whatever. Um, but busyness of reality sets in. We have a very action-oriented, fast-paced life. Um, sometimes we're under pressure to succeed, to go and produce. Sometimes we feel compelled to de develop goals, which is great. Um, we might find ourselves optimistic at first, like, yeah, go for it. Um, and as time progresses, life can throw us on a new journey that might dampen our attitude. So why? Why do we feel obliged to hold ourselves to the standard? We have to work with the push and pull of life. It's more about the journey rather than the end product. So connecting to this idea of dualism, the yin and the yang, the balance of opposites yet complementary forces, that solar, lunar, masculine, feminine, light, dark. It explains harmony of all things in nature around us. We have the sun or the yang energy that guides our life, our days, and our seasons. It makes life on earth possible. And it's that first spark of energy that we feel at the new year that desire for action, that feeling of strength and creation. And then there's the yin energy, that lunar energy at nighttime, not tonight. But when we come home, when we decompress, when we rest, when we move towards stillness and introspection. And that we have a little bit too little of right now at this point in our life. So these energies, again, are complementary you can't have one without the other. You have to rest in order to be active. You have to be in darkness in order to find light. You have to fail in order to succeed. There's this fluidity. And then there's the moon, our closest celestial neighbor. It connects us both to our outer world, to the expanse of the universe, and it acts as a mirror to help us look within. And although it's very small, it has a really big impact on Earth. It causes ocean tides. It affects reproductive cycles of a lot of sea species. And maybe, maybe it has an impact on us, who are roughly 65% made of water. Um, the gravitational pull of the moon stabilizes Earth on its axis and slows its rotation. Pause. When we allow ourselves to, let's see, there we go. Um, in our solar world, the moon gives us an opportunity to indulge in self-love. And it's not an indulgence. It's just a matter of taking care of yourself. Because our human experience is riddled with ups and downs, with joy and grief, with comfort and fear, with success and failure. It's important that we acknowledge those emotions, thoughts, and experiences as they are without judgment or shame. And connecting to our yin energy, that lunar flow, helps us to recognize where we're at in our own cycle of life, to tap into our own rhythms and patterns, and to be open to correlations and growth and learning opportunities. Lunar cycle is 28 days. It's a natural timekeeper. It consists of eight phases of the moon, starting with the new moon, growing towards full moon, and then dissipating back to the new moon in order to make space again for the next cycle. Um, each phase of the moon emanates at different kind of wavelengths. Here, which we kind of are at right now, our crescent, um, our waxing crescent, we first start with that empty 
blank slate and then have an opportunity to brainstorm and to bring about ideas to gather resources as our intention evolves. And then we have our full moon energy roughly two weeks into the cycle, which brings about manifestation or progress towards goals or intentions. Acknowledge setbacks and revise and readjust. And then it's also an opportunity to move forward to slow or release any intention. And the waning moon is an opportunity to regroup after the apex or big energy. Um, to accept your reality and just accept how your intention is taking shape. The balsamic moon is an opportunity to review and reflect, a time to retreat, to rest, and release attachment from out outcomes, and to make space for the cycle to happen again. As we transition into the new year, let's ease into it. Be sensible about resolutions. Because as we know, life ebbs and flows. Tap into your own yin, yang balance. And work towards being more than doing. Thank you. My name is Laura. I teach yoga at Sangha Studio, nonprofit donation-based yoga. Um, have a great New Year's. Thanks for having me.